If you're looking to relieve lower back pain, increase your hip mobility, be able to get up and down from the ground or pick things up off the ground without pain, then you're in the right spot. Today, I'm gonna discuss the deep squat, also known as the yogi squat or malasana. Welcome to my channel, my name is Jessie, and I am a holistic fitness trainer and certified body worker here to help you use movement as a tool for your mental well-being and your physical vitality. Please make sure you like and subscribe and check out the free training in the description. I've also linked a video in the description to a five minute hip mobility workout that you could practice along with. Let's talk about the yogi squat, why it's beneficial for your hips and your lower back, and then also how you can modify it to fit your body. The deep squat, the yogi squat, looks like this. Heels may be lifted, they may be on the ground. And the point of this posture, this pose, is really to get this deep foldability within the hip. Your hip is a ball and socket joint. And when you are in this position, the thigh bone moves in a way that creates this sort of separation, also known as distraction, within the hip capsule. And that space helps to increase circulation and relieve tension. Now I'm gonna scale it back a bit and show you how you can achieve the same concept of creating space in your hip capsule, which is so beneficial for relieving discomfort and pain without getting into this low deep squat because I know it's not accessible for all of us. I'm gonna review different variations of this deep squat, going from the easiest to more challenging. This way you can find what works for your body and you can also gradually build up to the deep squat if that's your goal. Our first position is gonna be laying on our backs. You can put a small pillow underneath your head and we're gonna start with a half happy baby. So taking one leg up, reaching up with one hand to grab onto the foot. If you can't grab the foot, you can always grab the ankle. Other knee is bent, my foot on the floor. And just taking a moment, here we are getting that deep foldability within the hip capsule. And I'm trying to maintain a neutral spine. So I'm trying to relax my tailbone, my sacrum onto the floor, creating a natural baby little arch through the lower back, lengthening the back of the neck. And if you don't need a pillow, you can always put it away. And pushing my foot into my hand a little bit. So my leg is pushing into my hand as I'm relaxing my tailbone down and I breathe. So I can practice this taking five to 10 slow deep breaths, working on that foldability within the hip, and then I can switch and I can go to the other side. So this is our easiest kind of level one position, just working on relaxing the sacrum, relaxing the tailbone down. If that gets easy, then I can straighten the opposite leg and practice this. Then I can progress to a full happy baby, both feet in hands, or I'm holding on to both ankles. Notice how my knees are wide, right? The knees are wide so I can you know, reach the arms along the inside of the legs, but I'm trying to create a neutral spine. So I don't want my tailbone up here. That's not the idea. I wanna relax my tailbone down, relax my ribs down, and then work on holding my legs. And you take about five, 10 breaths here. Now when those half happy baby or full happy baby positions start to feel easier, or maybe you use them as a warm up, then we can progress to our feet. The next progression would be to use a wall and to maybe use some yoga blocks. Let me show you. You can also grab a blanket or a, like a rolled up towel for under your heels. So I can use my blanket for under my heels. For those of us where, you know, the heels are really lifted so that I can have some space here and I have my wall behind me. And I can scoop back to that wall as much as possible and just start to play with, okay, hands on the wall, opening up my hips, creating that space within the hip capsule, that deep squat. And at first I might be up here, kind of playing with getting down. I can use the wall, I can lean back into the wall. Spend some time with the wall and then you can progress away from the wall. So here I'm gonna use my blanket under my heels again. Keeping the heels elevated takes the tightness out of the ankle joint out of it so you can focus on the hips because that's what we're working on. Hip, 
foldability. So I sink down low and I can just practice lengthening my spine. Now, if this feels like too much, I could create a throne underneath my hips. So I have something to sit on. This is a good way to practice using your elbows on the insides of your knees, open the knees wide, lift the chest, and then you can slowly take your throne a little lower, maybe eventually progressing to not using any throne at all. The idea is to keep the pelvis neutral, which means I'm not tucking and rounding. I'm really flaring my sit bones and just trying to sink into it. You gotta play with what works for your body. And then our final progression would be the full malasana. I could even start to make it more challenging by bringing my feet in. This one's kind of hard for me. You can play with it. I like to keep my feet wide. That just feels better for my hips. Really working on flaring the sit bones, not rounding, keeping the chest lifted. And of course, use your breath. There are so many benefits to spending time in this active squat position, along with creating space within the hip capsule, relieving lower back and hip tension. It also aids with digestion and elimination. Start to spend some time in this position, whatever variation works for your body. Start with a minute a day and then gradually build yourself up. Be patient, it will get easier. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. Remember, there are simple things that you can do to feel empowered to take your health into your own hands. Begin where you are, do what you can, deep breaths, and I'll see you next time.